Hey everybody, how's it going? Dan Schinder here with Steven Schinder with our guest. Yeah. Oh, Richard Stolt is that? That's right. We're so excited <laughs> to have you and talk about so much stuff. One of the biggest things, of course, is the new Flower Kings album. We'll talk about your work history with the band and with John Anderson, a flash in the pan artist some people may have heard of. We'll get into <laughs> that. Uh, but Steve, where do you want to start? Right. So the Flower Kings began nearly 30 years ago. And look at you now, uh, to quote the title of the new album coming <laughs> from Inside Out Music, <laughs> September 8th. What would you say, uh, Royna, is, has been some of the biggest changes over the years for the band? The biggest changes? Um, wow. Uh, the biggest changes. Um, I think ev everything is sort of uh, going gradually. Uh, I mean, looking back, if, you, if I could step back like almost 30 years, you know, sure. uh, what happened? happened back then is I've been in the music business for a very long time and I have to say also playing progressive rock that's how I started professionally uh, in 1974 mm. and recording the first album 1975 be, uh, being in a band called Kaipa in Sweden but that was mainly we were touring all of Sweden we were working each and every day uh maybe not christmas eve i think we actually rehearsed the day before christmas eve but then we spent time with the families and then going back again <laughs> uh, and so work 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 very hard and we had some success here in sweden mainly uh played in norway denmark and um, but the the records we sold were mainly in sweden right uh, so that's how i started and then um went on from there to do all sorts of music, you know, playing with different people, producing albums, touring, sometimes even doing sound. Because I, um, by doing uh, my own recordings, I got into the sound thing, you know. So I learned a bit about uh, sound recordings and mixing desks and, you know, tweaking the knobs and microphones and all that. So that's what I did for a while and then got back to music and playing and sometimes even playing in cover bands, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I played my Beatles songs, my David Bowie songs or what would be the most weird cover tunes. It could be anything from Neil Young to Frankie Goes to Hollywood, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that's yeah. What it was back then, you know, people wanted to hear a song they, they heard on the radio, you know, okay, and you play it. That's right, yeah. But you learn, you learn from doing that, you know, you learn different styles, and and I always loved that. I always loved to not uh, restrict my guitar playing to just to progressive rock, you know. I, I used to be a blues guitar player from the beginning, you know, mm. and mm. listening to Clapton and Peter Green and those guys, and then I got into prog rock, you know, and I have to, hmm, Here's here's Robert Fripp and here's Steve Howe and this is yeah. how they play, you know, and 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 then you adapt a little bit to that. But in in my heart, I always view myself more like a, a blues guitar player, you know, that maybe closer to Dave Gilmore than than to Hackett or 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 Steve Howe, to be honest. Right. Mm. The, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Oh. Well, the music we've heard so far from the new album, uh, based on the two singles that have come out, feels both classic Flower Kings, but also very now. Yeah. What would you say is the key to maintaining the band's musical identity while also moving forward? Um, I don't know. Well, th this is something we, we talk a little bit about, you know, and I, th I remember we talked about it before, even starting working on the album, I, I think I said it was more like pro probably me, you know, talking to the guys mm. saying, oh, well, we got all these albums out and I'd like to make an album that that sounds very much like the Flower Kings, but at the same time, we need to bring in something new. So we need to try different things, you know, not entirely. You, you can't like switch your style to something else because then you're going to lose the audience. Right. But 
I'd like to put in stuff that we haven't played before or try different styles or whatever you can come up with that we feel is a new sound for the band, you know. So I think um, the composing is another part of it, you know. Uh, we try to pick uh, some newly written songs, but also try to look back a few years. I At least I, I did. And I think actually the the starting of of the the whole album is actually a song that parts not all of it but parts of it was written even before the Flower King started. So th this is something I composed probably around the early nineties, ninety one, ninety two. Does that uh, tie into Beginner's Eyes? Yeah. 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 Yeah, and this is something I found on an old demo that probably been transferred from my first Atari computer that I wrote at the time I, I did music on that one. And then I transferred to the Mac uh, and then to another Mac. And now, I mean, I don't know how many Macs I've had since then, but <laughs> I just move them, you know, move the files and, and try to save them because maybe one day you hear it and then you think, oh, maybe that was a nice little melody. That's a nice little riff. So that's what happened uh, with uh, beginner's eyes. That that's uh, that's part of it. Not not the the lyrics, but some of the melodies and riffs in that one is actually something that was written even before the Flower King started as a band. Interesting. So, uh, and you also mentioned in your background getting into production. What was your what is or has been your favorite aspect of being a, on the producer side and had that how did that help you as a musician in the studio or with composing? Uh, well, I think you listen to the, the there's a few things that actually comes into play here and and one is that I started uh, learning guitar in the well six maybe 68, 69. And then I switched to bass guitar because my friend who actually taught me guitar. And the funny thing is my friend that showed me how to play guitar, he plays on the uh, the song, The Queen. So it's, oh. it's his, yeah, that's a nice, nice book ending. But anyway, uh, he was a better guitar player than me. So he said, well, uh, how about you play bass? And then I, 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 I think I started playing bass and listening to bass players you know and at the time i had some guys i'd like to listen to i mean of course paul mccartney but tim bogart of vanilla fudge oh, I yeah was a great play you know and and um so these type of, of bass players played uh, a little bit more you know they're all over the fretboard yeah melodic bass playing melodic melodic bass yeah totally and mccartney definitely a melodic bass and uh, yeah and later on, of course, people like uh, Mike Rutherford and, and uh, Chris Squire, of course, yeah. mm. on melodic bass. But I think I did that for a while, you know, and then I switched to guitar. Uh, but uh, it gave me an idea about how I can change the direction of the music playing bass and, and to harmonize. Mm. And also understand the the chord structures, you know. And I didn't play piano at that time. I, well, maybe a little bit, but over time I've I've been sort of forced to learn to play uh, piano or keyboards, you know, and and find out the chords, not just like the simple chords, but the big, the big jazz chord, so to speak. Yeah. So and 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 training my ear to hear all that. So I think that helped me to also understand and not only that actually i i started listening to drummers you know and try to understand the the aspect of how you use your drums to keep the beat but to you know use the accents how to use the dynamics of of your playing a drum kit you know and all the right. great that that play dynamic I, that's the kind of guys i like uh yeah. listen to you know me too a lot yeah of actually yes musicians you know um and by learning a little bit of of different instruments and how they sound and what range they have and how you can use them in 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 in, in the music context i think that helped me also get into the production aspect of things and hearing how you mix an album and 
what is uh, if you if let's say you have a, a a vocal theme, you know, you need to support the vocal theme. You need you, you don't need to have lots of cool guitar licks in in the vocal theme, you know, or <laughs> right. or basic keyboard is just playing over it, or a drummer doing fills every, every right. Round. <laughs> crazy uh, chops over the vocals yeah 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 that's that's what we do when we start you know that's the the beginner thing you know you yeah you play because it's fun you know and then you start listening to what you're playing and say oh that didn't sound that great you know maybe if you just keep a straight beat here you know and and you stay on that bass riff you know because that's gonna feel groovy after a time you yeah. know you 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 and th that's great with all the the great um uh, the great funk play players and also people like Jaco Pastorius was the king of, of oh, keep yeah. that groove, you know. So, so I mean, bit by bit, you learn about how different instruments can have an impact on on the whole structure of the music, and 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 uh, it's I mean, it's been a, a quite a journey, and 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 uh, so nice to <laughs> to learn about little things, you know, and. And and now I, I think also my my hearing is in a strange way. Most musicians say, "Oh, my hearing is gone because of all the loud music on stage, and I, everyone is cranking up their Marshall stacks and all that." You know, sure. I, I I play you know sometimes loud on stage, but I I try to I try to keep it down, and and I think I I have enough left on my hearing to hear even small details. And when I'm in the studio. In particular, I never play the music loud. Yeah, because... you've got to really hear what's happening from the near field speakers to the wide range, and yeah, you have to have I, an ear for that. I, I I have actually just a near field. That's that's what I. Yeah, yeah, I don't have any big speakers because what's the point? That's not yeah. the way you or I are gonna listen to it at home. There's just right. a few hi-fi guys that have this big sound system but right, big theater sound oh, but most consumers yeah. like you say two speakers yeah or even listening in in earphones or from your ipod Earbuds. or iPod or whatever yeah so so you got to be re realistic about that you know and uh, i'm trying to do the mixes if the mix is sounding great on the low volume you, you can hear the kick drum you can hear the bass lines Mm -hmm. You can hear the, the tiny little uh, triangle or, or tambourine or something like that, or the backing vocals. Then yeah. it's a good mix, you know. Anyone can be, uh, mix a, a fat big mix with uh, lots of compression. Yeah, and, where everything's just blowing at you. But yeah, like yeah. You and then, say, and, and when it's, power chords, you know, left, right, power chord thing, you know. Yeah, but when it's real low, like you say, the lower you can bring down that volume and still hear the articulation of everything, you know you've got a good mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. A funny quote, Royna, is uh, on the Made in Japan album, the live album by Deep Purple, between one of the songs you can hear Ian Gillen say, and he's being sarcastic, I'm sure. He's saying, yeah. make everything louder than everything else. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just sounds so yeah. funny. Yeah. It's like this yeah. infinity spiral upward and yeah, wider, yeah. you know? <laughs> that, yeah, that's totally Spinal Tap, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let's talk about the second single, Dream. Steve and I just are crazy about this song in this video. Yeah, it, it has a nice little backstory we heard about that I think some of us can relate to, you know, hearing music in a dream and then wanting to take note of it before the memory of the dream fades away. Can you tell us a bit more about this song? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's well, you said you, you probably experienced it, that kind of thing, too. You hear music or you're at the concert and you hear some great band and, and you that's in the dream, you know, and then you think, well, what, is, what is this, you know? And hmm. it happened to me every now and then that I hear a song and I think, oh, that's a great song. And I wake up, you know, at seven or something like that. And then you go back to sleep because you think it was so great. So I will remember that. <laughs> but you don't. But you don't. It's it's gone, you know. Uh, but this time I was smart enough to say, okay, it's actually five thirty. Let's get up, you know. Mm -hmm. And I have my studio at home, so I get up. I go into the studio, switch on everything, and uh, I just you know hammer out the chords on the piano and start singing the melody, get it into the computer. And uh, maybe an hour and a half later, I can go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 
you know, and I had parts of the lyrics and I had the, the vocal melody and it's actually quite a simple song, but there was something about it that I felt that lying in my bed, I felt, what if I don't remember this? I'm going to never forgive myself doing that. Why? I should get, get up, actually do it now. Because Why you I, have it. Ah, uh, yeah. Going back to sleep, I'm not gonna remember it. You think you're gonna remember it, but you don't. Right. Exactly. It's not meant to be. But but this time, for whatever reason, I I went in and I I I I tracked the the basics of the song, the melody, chords, and some of the the vocal things. And uh, I'm glad I did because it's yeah. uh, you know in a way it's probably meant to be or or and and if in fact. Um, when we recorded the album and and uh, everything was pretty much done, uh, we were talking about songs. And I remember Hasse, the other singer. He said, "Well, that's a great song. That that song should definitely be somewhere in the in the you know beginning of the album. And you know that's maybe could be the single." Hmm. He was really yeah. He was very. In, he was insisting that this should be the single. I said, "Well." It's a good song. I don't know if it should be a single, really, because is it really a Flower King song? You know, does it have the Flower King sound? In that sense, um, is it something that will get people excited? Uh, but um, both him and Michael, uh, and I think also Mirko, the drummer, said the same thing. So, you know, I said, well, probably you guys are right. You know, it's just you. Like you might may have been too close to it. Oh, yeah, to I think hear it right. with objectivity the way they did, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. But I was, I was because the way the song came to me, I was just open minded to. Well, maybe that's meant to be, you know. And yeah. Maybe, maybe they're right, you know. Yeah. The video and the art, the artwork on the cover of the album is featured in the video, which is just uh, amazing. And Steve is going to put the YouTube links to both songs that we're going to be talking about in the comments. He's got to pin it to the top. We encourage you all to watch it. The only reason we don't fly it in and show it is obviously because it's an official video and soundtrack and it'll get muted and all that, but we're going to put the links there so you can go to their channel and Ooh, check cool. it out. But it's just, it's so modernly hippie, if I could put it that way, you know, <laughs> yeah. just like your music. I get it. I get it. Yeah. It's really cool. Is there, is, is this like what's going on in Sweden or are you guys still like an anomaly? Like what's the music scene like there as a whole? Is it more like ABBA mm. and Tears for Fears and B-52s and then there's you guys? Or is there a lot of people trying to keep up with the prog scene or the metal scene? What What's it like? What's the diversity or lack of? Uh, it's actually everything. I mean, the big commercial things is dance music, I think. It's machine music. So it's, oh, it's, wow. So it's usually, I mean, the, 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 the big seller or the, the, the videos that have like uh, 5 million hits, you know, on, on YouTube. These are people that are probably in their 20s. Yeah. Uh, they have uh, funny clothes and a funny hairdo and, and um, they're, kind of uh, young and hip and you know they're in yeah. and, and it's just like it seems for whatever reason these are the people that the record labels are working hard to promote harder be because they can or maybe I don't know there must be a reason or the, the music is simple to to get out of the crowds and M you get maybe lost. equating to when new wave and that stuff first hit and there was that whole new, literally a wave of something for the people who didn't fit in with the rock scene or the metal scene and didn't get progressive and folksy was too old school for them. And then new wave came out and here's this whole genre for a whole new culture I, of people. Maybe it's something like that. I don't think so. I, I think it's uh, very simple. It's just like uh, very uh, uh, simple, easy listening songs, you know, accessible. And I think uh, young people can identify with them, you know, mm. they can identify with me or, or, or Ian Anderson or, or Todd Rundgren or these people, they cannot identify with us, but there may be people that 
love this kind of music once they get exposed to it and listen listen a little bit more they can find things in it just the way i found out about old guys music you know when i was <laughs> I, I listened to whatever cannonball adley or 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 um, later to uh, uh, john coltrane or you know right. these guys frank zappa wasn't a super old guy back then but it's all relative though right yeah yeah but he was he was he was not really uh he wasn't the monkeys if you know what i mean or he was yeah the whole... but so he that, was that... ancient in his 40s for the time i know <laughs> <laughs> just just the way he looked from some other planet but the thing is i think i think it it, it has to be like this and and uh, it's it's not a it's i mean it is what it is but in sweden you have that but then, of course, you have ABBA, and ABBA are even older than me, you know. So, so they're old people right now. <laughs> right. They made an album last year, I think. Yeah, they did. They released a new album that was great. And and then you have uh, the alternative rock scene, of course. So you have right. these type of bands, and then you have um, more like folk music or folk music meets rock almost like uh, Bob Dylan style music mm -hmm. and you have electronica. So you have like uh, two people in raincoats playing synths and different electronica things, you know? Yeah. And then you have uh, death metal bands in Sweden. There's plenty of, of, of metal in Sweden. So you know? there's a lot of different things. Oh, oh yeah, yeah definitely. And great. then you have a, a vibrant jazz scene. I mean, lots of young oh. jazz musicians. And 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 very good, I have to say. I mean, great players, you know, saxophone players and and drummers and and absolutely world class musicians. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Do they get to venture out, Royna, and play like around Europe or even outside of Europe, or is it more of a in country close? I think scene? some 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 of them. I mean, we we've uh, we've uh, we've had a, a keyboard player in the band now for uh, a couple of months, and Danny Lance, and he he's he's in a jazz group that's more like a funk jazz thing, you know. And I know they've been, they've been touring around, you know. I think they've been in Japan, but I definitely know they've been in America and, and play there, you know. And and that's great. It, I have a couple of other friends, you know, playing that type of, of music that actually go out playing festivals in Europe. And and then you have a couple of prog bands, of course, the the, the usual, I mean, Anecdoten and Anglagard and, and all those mm -hmm. guys were around for, for a while. And, and cool. uh, so so I think there's, there's actually, there's not one single thing happening in Sweden. I think it's uh, lots of different uh, music you know and we have a live scene here uh, a stage here in uh, in Uppsala an outdoor stage and uh, funnily enough actually John Anderson played there two oh, weeks really? ago oh two was, weeks ago wow was crazy because he's in Europe uh, maybe they they went home now but playing the last show but uh, with Paul Green yeah uh, with yeah with, with Paul Green yeah and I, I just found out and I said to John, do you know, you're going to play my hometown. What are the chances of you playing my hometown? I was born in the hospital just about 500 meters from the stage. Oh, wow, how funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, it's crazy. But anyway, so this, this stage, they have sometimes a death metal band, and then you have typical Swedish folk music, and then you have uh, pop top 40s uh, thing, you know, and then you have music for older folks and and all the summer from uh, beginning of june i think until beginning of september they have a variation of different styles of music and sometimes even uh, american i think i saw um uh, warren haynes i saw you're familiar with warren haynes i'm mm. not no. are you steve no no i'm not well, all my brothers we'll look him up, <laughs> we'll up. yeah, yeah. All my brothers, you know, all my brothers. Yeah. We'll have yeah. to, this is why I asked that question because I think it's a great way to discover new music outside of what we're mostly exposed to, you know, in our own regional areas. Yeah. 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 But anyway, Warren Haynes has been uh, around for a very, very long time. He played with the All My Brothers a long time and he has uh, his own band called Gavin Mule, I think. 
Oh, and, uh, I'm familiar with Government Mule. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. A great singer, great guitar player. They yeah. played summer the same stage you know so so anyway we get a little bit of that you know in, in my hometown in sweden in general i think um i can't complain really i think it's fine and we can play shows here in in sweden with the flower kings you know mm -hmm. not to a super big audience but good enough yeah I think. that's great yeah that's cool yeah this past year there have also been reissues of the flower king's back catalog with the sum of no evil having been reissued for vinyl earlier this summer what's the process been like getting those reissued and some even for the first time on vinyl from what i understand yeah true uh well what happened was that the the record company contacted me and said uh, we're gonna do your back catalog on vinyl and um, anything you you want to check, you know, as far as the artwork or or correct stuff that's you know mm. maybe not correct nowadays, and and uh, and I said, well, I'd like to look over the 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 master tapes, you know, and see if anything can be actually improved. And uh, mm. it just felt like okay, they're doing this on vinyl, and and they did also vinyl plus uh, CD. So I'm thinking, okay, if they're gonna uh, have this, the whole catalog back, you know, in, yeah. in stock, I what? might as well do it proper. Mm. And I, 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 I'm glad I did, but at the same time, I, I regretted that. <laughs> I told them, <laughs> the I'm amount gonna... of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took me about one and a half year to to go through. And and you have to understand the the very first Flower Kings albums, they were they were recorded on reel to reel tape you know mm -hmm. so i needed needed to find the tapes and what you do with tapes uh, to to be able to play old tapes you have to put them in an oven you know and bake them for about uh, whatever 20 hours or something like that yeah and and then put them on the player and then take them into the system you know digital system and and right and were they 16 24 track they're 24 right uh, no, uh, 16 track, uh, the oh. first few of us were 16 track. And then I added, uh, like an A that, uh, like a digital. Yeah. That I, I remember sing. the A dots. Yeah. Yeah. So I did that. And then we moved on to hard drives and to, uh, in the final stage, uh, to, uh, well, to computer based. Mm -hmm. so, so that, that's, um, I mean, that's, uh, that's, I, I'm, as I'm glad I did it, but it was lots of work. And it was interesting also because I reconnected with the albums in a way. And I was pre pleasantly surprised hearing some of it. I have to be honest, I <laughs> some of the albums, I, ha I hadn't heard them in years. They that must just... have been a trip to kind of revisit it, not oh? sporadically, but as a catalog for a year and a half, going through them with those ears, right? That must have been... Yeah. Some some of the songs I probably haven't heard in ten or twelve years, something like that, you know. Yeah. And in, coming back and hearing that, uh, uh, I was surprised how great some of it sounded, you know. And I was surprised also some of it didn't sound that great. But I mean, these were the pieces I I remixed and fixed, you know. Yeah. And it was a little bit over over compressed and and you know. Uh, different different ideas about sound and different di different ways of mixing and different equipment i have to say so and now i have a listening system that is more accurate and uh, you know uh, lots of things have changed over time you know i was going to say right, that, definitely. that's interesting <laughs> yeah the leap in technology between oh. when those recordings were were recorded mixed and mastered and pressed versus now reissuing them and working with today's technology okay yeah. yeah yeah probably going from like a a propeller plane to a spaceship <laughs> almost yeah, yeah yeah i mean just the way just the way you go from a tape where you have like in in, in my case 16 channels that you need to fill with something okay you can't have 16 channels of drums like we uh, have today maybe 16 or 18 channels of drums right but then you have the drums but then you have to, space for the bass for the keyboards for the vocals for the percussion guitars acoustic guitars yeah um so so you have to think you know and you have a plan of how you want to map it up you know and what you want to put on you know 
Yeah. And then uh, it's talking about reissues. There's another recent issue with the Anderson Stolt on orange vinyl. And I was going to ask where, mm -hmm. why orange, but I think I might know the answer because your room is kind of orange. You have an orange amp and cabinet <laughs> back there. Is orange uh, a color close to your heart? No, not at all. I think oh, it's, so it's just the leftover vinyl they had. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, it's actually uh, my thinking when you have an album, I look at the cover and I, I, I think, okay, what kind of colors do we have here? Uh, and uh, if I can find the color that sort of match the co cover of the artwork, you know. Yeah, and it's a very nice cover too. It's, yeah, there you go. So the orange is complemented. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, a little bit like that. And sometimes you you discuss with the record label. I think for this new one, they, I said definitely because you have, you have on this one you have this yellow flower. Yeah. And the eye is kind of brownish ye yellow, and yeah. and then you have all the greens here. So I I suggested okay, let's make a yellow and a green one, and it turned out to be yellow and uh, something else. I don't know, blue one. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Someone was colorblind or something. Yeah, no, yeah, could, could no be. Pun intended. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, no big deal. It's 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 fine. It's yeah, fine. and by the way, Stephen, that guy, Stephen <laughs> ranks that Anderson Stolt album as one of his most regarded albums ever, along with Tales from Topographic Oceans and Elias of Sun Hello. These are like his three favorite albums ever. Yeah, like it really lifted my spirits uh, when I was going through like sort of a tough time several years back. And I love it. It, it lives rent free in my head. Uh, so I was curious, what was the uh, reason for the reissue and remixing? Like what were the differences in the remix? Yeah, being that that's so recent compared to something from 23 I know, years ago. I know, I, I don't understand. No, it actually comes from the fact that when we released the albums, uh the, the album back then it was in uh 2016 right yes yeah 16. um then uh, it, uh almost immediately there was talk about uh doing a surround mix which i started so i started i i, I think i surround mixed half of the album and then it sort of i don't know what happened uh it it didn't really happen and also i did um uh because as we were talking about uh, tape machines and all that, the evolution of, of sound recordings and how people listen to music, you know, and the downloads, the 24-bit 96, yeah. the lost less, blah, 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 all that, you know. So I was in the middle of that and 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 people sending me email, oh, can you can you mix this, you know? And I, oh, yeah, okay. I, I, I have my surround system here. I can start a mix, you know, and then it goes, you know, away like that, poof, and, and something else happens and 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 uh, I hear nothing about it uh, again. But <laughs> I had I had already s uh, started doing stereo mixes um, in twenty four bit ninety six uh, in uh, two thousand uh, could have been seventeen I think mm. probably ah maybe five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that, and they were just lying around, and then uh, you know so much happened in between then uh, and now and and for me coming back to the flower kings doing albums touring and and the covid of course and and for john i think first with uh, with rick and uh, trevor uh, right. do, doing the tour and then yeah. paul green and 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 the band geeks and everything there's always some and also the thousand hands you know yeah so there's so much you know happening all the time and for both of us and so but then uh, we realized that uh, people couldn't buy the album anymore and i thought that well uh, so i i talked to the record label and said well how are we supposed to to sell or recoup if we if people can't buy the album uh that, that that's weird you know if you have the album you should have it in in store you know mm. right yeah and and now with the you know with the demand for vinyl again you know I think uh, they decided to do the vinyl, and then I had already the mix mixes. Oh, the the interesting thing here is that the opening track actually has two minutes that wasn't on the original. Ooh! Oh wow! 
Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, so, so you get some bonus stuff. Yeah, Tails kind of had something like that too, funny enough. <laughs> yeah. 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 And and it comes from the fact that I I did I did a remix of it, but I didn't cut out that bit. And that's the in my mind, that's a great keyboard solo from Tom Brislin, a synth mm. solo. Yeah. For a part, but for whatever reason, we did cut out that for for the uh, the original album. Uh, but I had it in here, and I was just thinking, why why would we cut that out now? Because <laughs> I bet there's so many people will love to hear that, you know. And yeah, you have that's the other, cool. Anyway, so okay, you have the other version, you have the CD, if you want to listen to that. But now we have this one with another two, two or two and a half minutes of of a great keyboard solo, you know. So it's what was different. the process like? Roy, now working with John on that album. Uh, well, the process. I think it's something that came from. Well, we 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 played we played the show on a, a cruise ship, and so we connected there. And then I think the record label said something like, "Well, you're probably the the the, the person that should work with John Anderson uh, would be you because of of the way you." write music and hear music and arrange music you could you could help him you know realize something that's that's uh that would suit his mm -hmm. his style of singing and writing so they connected us and they they said they sent a mail to to john and i think he sent me the same day i think sent me a couple of songs you know and we just there was wasn't much talk we just started working on something you know interesting yeah, interesting. And I, I, I just kept it open, you know, and he kept sending me stuff and, and, and I was reworking and cutting and pasting and doing bits and he was re-singing stuff and rewriting lyrics. And so it was a bit of a process, you know, before, before we could sort of understand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, understand what we were actually working. It's usually like that, you know, you, you, yeah. you try things out and some of the songs didn't work out and some of the songs actually uh, uh you know we we uh, i was i was surprised actually at some of the developments of some of the songs even even a simple song and i think that's the the greatness of of john is actually he can and i understand it better now he can he can do like a very simple vocal phrase and if it's if it's uh connected in in a way with the music and the chords in the right way I think it can be great. So if you listen to, for instance, you listen to things like topographic oceans, yeah. there's so many parts there that you can actually pick up an acoustic guitar, strum a few chords and you can sing it and it's yeah. great. But then if you put on whatever, Alan's drums and, and the, the Mellotrons and Steve Howe's guitar, uh, it becomes a prog rock epic. <laughs> right, right. And I think John has that ability to write simple melodies without sounding simple in a negative way i think mm -hmm. it's simple in a very positive way just like maybe paul mccartney interesting that, yeah i think i think yeah. that's the two people that can actually do simple things but they do it in a way that's classy and 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 elegant you know yeah that's neat do you happen to have a recollection of perhaps a funny anecdote of when you guys were working together, something funny with John that you can share. Oh, it sounds like there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, no, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's um, usually the most of the the um, the most of the communication was done by email, and uh, that could be at the at the time it could be maybe five or ten emails a day mm. with like MP3 files sending sending back, and he saying something, sending back to me, etc. At one point, I was sitting here in the studio, and I it may have been working with our album. It could have been something, something else, you know, some Flower Kings related stuff. But I'm sitting here in my studio, and and the phone rings. And the funny thing, the the funny part is, the funny part is, I was actually sitting in my studio chair where I'm sitting now, and I I, I was really tired. So I was just you know in the afternoon and. I, I take a nap in my like this, you know, and the phone rings, and I pick up the phone. Hello, uh, Rona, sir. Hi, it's John. I said, who? <laughs> <laughs> and I, 
and he said, well, how many, how many, John, do you know? <laughs> 30. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just felt so stupid because I was <laughs> just waking up, you know, to a uh, phone call from, from John Anderson. And he goes, how many, John, do you know? Well, I, I, that's such I, not, a funny question. <laughs> yeah you know like he's got a unique name or something <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. how would you possibly know another john of all names i, right? I, I think I, I probably know maybe one or two but you know it was just so funny because i was just you know working so hard and then falling yeah. asleep and then knowing. there's that voice right that and, and, voice and you you can never miss well that that's that must be john anderson <laughs> right <laughs> but i was so messed up in my head and so tired that I was oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah funny thanks for yeah. sharing that yeah. yeah and we've been hearing here and there that a second Anderson Stolt album might be in the works uh, is there anything you're allowed to share about that at this point in time we won't no, tell I mean, John <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. no I mean not really it's it's um I actually worked the last uh, the last week, last couple of days, I worked with um, bringing out uh, the hard drives and and uh, trying to do proper mixes for us to review. Uh, because of course, when he was here in 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 Uppsala and, and play the show, we talked about it and he said, "Well, we must finish this album." So I thought, "Well, we must we really must finish this album," mm -hmm. you know. Um, so um, I I brought up the. The hard drives and listen to it and i have a pretty good idea of what sections or what songs i think would be great you know there's stuff on there there's, there's one little song he wrote together with his son you know that i absolutely oh, love. Wow. great song very melodic very poppy but great <laughs> and, interesting uh, yeah, I'm thinking it's, it's a kind of a song that you think you hear on on the radio it could be a hit song you know Oh it's, wow, that's type of 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 not not a dance song, nothing like that. It's more like a, yeah. I don't know what to say, what to call it, but it's it's just like a very radio friendly song, you know, of maybe three and a half, four minutes. So that's I mean, cool. that's great stuff. There's there's progressive stuff and more developed, you know, orchestral things. So so we we've been working on lots of stuff, but I think now is the time to. To pin it down to and and decide what can be recorded and 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 uh, tracked you know track the drums and bass and all that. A lot right. of the guitar work is done already, but and and some keyboard works. But uh, I'm sure we're gonna add things and so I'm I'm trying my best to to make it happen. You know and uh, great. We would yeah. love that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll be one of the first people to pre-order it when it becomes available. Sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so Tom Brislin, you also mentioned, um, and you and uh, Jules Reingold uh, worked with him along with Marco Miniman and Daniel Gildenlow as The Sea Within uh, yeah. a few years ago. And mm -hmm. when we had Tom on our show earlier this year, uh, mm -hmm. And we asked him about possible future plans for The Sea Within, he had a never say never attitude though we know that everyone's busy with certain things so how do you view the possibility of more work from the sea within in the future if that's possible well i i, I mean i i hope for a second album but i being realistic the way things are right now you know with uh, mm. tom with kansas uh, and jonas playing with steve hackett and i try to <laughs> scale down a little bit because I, I've I've been in many different bands and doing many different projects right. so I try to cut down a little bit and concentrate on the Flower Kings try to concentrate on making this album with John uh, and I have one other project uh, that I've been working on this summer uh, that's an album with uh, um the drummer from uh, who used to be in Jethro Tull, Don Perry. Oh, he's a oh, good wow. friend. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So was Marco. Yeah. They've both been on the show many times. Yeah. Oh, yeah it's yeah, funny. Cool. I've been thinking about Don lately. I, I need to ring him up and have him on. Yeah. Oh, please do. 
Please do. Anyway, they sent me music. I'm, I'm, I met Don many years ago. We were playing support uh, to Jethro Tull, a show in Italy, I think. And and we connected after that. So he uh, he called me up and we talked for maybe two hours, you know. And, uh, and uh, they had a project at the time called Thread, I think. Him and the guy called Vince DiCola. Uh, he... he He's the guy who made music for uh, the Transformer movies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. He's, he's a really, really good piano player. Uh, and um, so that's that's what he does. And and um, they've been working on an album for a long time now. And uh, Don asked me if I would play some guitar on it. And I did. And then he asked me to play some more. And I ended up playing on all the album. Um, I think that he has Steve Hackett on it too, and they have people like uh, Tony Levin and uh, Leland Sklar, bass oh, player. Wow. Yeah, so these kind of people. But um, I have to say, it's a really good album. It's one of the best albums I played on in my life. I have to say. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah, and it's really good. And I'm really keeping my, you know. I'm hoping they can get it released, you know, and uh, finished. Uh, and he's good friends with, um, uh, what's the name? Uh, drum, another drummer who played with Toto, Simon Phillips. Simon, yeah. Simon. So Simon is supposed to, to mix the album, which is, uh, oh, uh, yeah, I think it's a good idea because he, he does great sound, you know. That's great. Yeah, so so I'm just hoping that you know they there's some uh, something happens with it, you know. Cool, we with, hope so too. We'd love to have you back on and talk about yeah, that. Maybe we yeah. don't when it comes out. Oh, please, please yeah. do, because it's so good. It's it's. I mean, it would be a it would be a shame if it just would lie around and uh, not. I mean. It, I know what it is like today. You and you have like Inside Out. I'm trying to to sell it into Inside Out, you know, and have these yeah. guys do it. And and uh, because they're the, sort of the the big uh, prog label today, you know, with with Dream Theater and Yes and Jethro Tull and, and all these Kansas and all these bands signed to the label, you know, I think it's it's the right label to be on. Yeah, and, and I'm really happy to hear that Don is so active again because I know he spent a lot of time making sure he was there for Heather and taking care of her. So oh yeah, it's, no, I it's great that he's doing something like this. It's exciting. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to push him to to uh, be finished in 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 time because you know it's you never know. We we're here for a short time, you know, and and it's like. I think it's just too good to be just lying around. Right. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Interesting. Wow, I had no idea that was coming. That took <laughs> me by surprise for sure. And we also heard that the Absolute Universe and the final flight uh, mm -hmm. live at La Olympia are the last releases from Transatlantic. Um, how do you view the breadth of work in that band? Um, any memories you'd like to share? Uh well, there's always there's always memories. Um, Transatlantic as a band, you know, that get together. Uh, used to be we get together in America to record in the studio, and uh, and then uh, we split, and then maybe half an, uh, half a year later we we end up on a tour, and uh, so let's say we tour for two or three weeks, and that's it, you know, and then we split, and then then lots of other things happening in between and everyone is in so many different bands yeah yeah it's, it's difficult to i mean to keep together and to get a a, a really uh, a solid band feel i think you know for a band like that you know so uh i don't know it just felt like uh, the last album we did was was a good one and and the, the show we played in paris was a really good show and i was really happy with that you know great audience and and we we played well and uh i i i don't know I, it feels like and i i probably told them before but definitely when i saw the show and uh mixed and everything it felt like it was a good decision i i felt like this is probably we should end here hmm. and, and on that, you know i know yeah yeah this is how we should be remembered 
Interesting. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And what can you tell us about the upcoming Flower Kings concerts in Europe? And will you be coming to North America? Uh, we, we will definitely, we need to go to North America because we're playing these, this, well, the crew, I, I don't know, do they call it Cruise to the Edge? Yes, Cruise to the Edge. Yeah, we're going to ask yeah, you about that too, yeah. Yeah, because I think Yes is not playing Cruise to the Edge, so I was thinking that maybe they changed the name, but it's still Cruise. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's cruise. still Cruise to the Edge. Yeah. yeah. It's still Cruise to the Edge, yeah. Anyway, so we, we're playing that, and and um, the, the plan or the idea is, of course, to try to get a few shows in America happening. Great, since you'll be and, here. Yeah, I mean we're we're there already. So can, let's say we can get five or six shows in America, maybe two in Canada. That makes sense to me. Yeah, I live in the mountains. Um, a few years ago, my wife and I said, "Screw it!" When it comes to living in the city, so we live in the mountains, about a hundred miles east of Phoenix. You can come play at our house. Uh, <laughs> it's nice. Of you. Arizona. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm from LA and she's from the Bronx and we met in Vegas years ago. So oh, we, we had really? a lifetime of big city life and we just wanted to kind of get away a little bit. And uh, I told her when she said we came through here on a little trip and then she said she wanted to move here. And I said, well, if they have running water and really good internet, we'll check it out. And here we are seven years later. Cool. Yeah, so I'm it's different. I mean, I, I love cities but i have like a hate uh, hate love and hate relationship with mm -hmm. some of it's like new york or los angeles or london or paris you know yeah i love it and i hate it yeah well right. we'd love to see you in america yeah for sure that'd be great so much going on with you guys gosh yeah i know i know <laughs> I, I i have this uh this is what i do these days i I do this list of stuff, you know, that I need to. Yeah. I, I absolutely need to because uh, there's so much going on. So no, I, I, I rather have a list than I can sort of, oh, okay, I did that. I did that yesterday. And even things like this, doing, uh, doing the interviews, I need to keep track of it. And, and yeah. you know, yeah. we appreciate you time. taking the time. That helps. Yeah. Definitely. I think Steve has one or two last questions in our can. Yeah. Uh, right. So I was wondering what was it like uh, working on Steve Hackett's Genesis Revisited 2? I think you were on a song there and you were also on Live at the Row Albert Hall about a decade ago. I think it started with, um, it started with, uh, oh my goodness. I think it started with we invited Steve to to play because we were playing uh, Giant Hogweed, the Genesis song. We oh, I love that, that song. Yeah, yeah, we were playing that with Transatlantic as a cover on, on some album. And then someone said, well, ask Steve if he want to join the band when we play in London. And he came down to play with us. And then we played another festival and he played with us again. And uh, so we and then I bumped into Steve uh, a couple of times. We were playing shows with, uh, must have been uh, maybe Flower Kings so or maybe maybe Agents of Mercy. We were playing somewhere somewhere uh, Southern Europe, you know, for some festivals. And uh, we were bumping into Steve every now and then, and mm -hmm. and the Laurel Festival. So uh, you know, we got to know Steve, and he's he's been also. Um, uh, going to some transatlantic show i think even before that we even before we played so anyway uh, i got to know steve and then i was just sitting here in the studio and and one day he called me and said uh, how do you feel about coming playing with me uh, uh, doing this tour i'm doing this 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 autumn you know uh, we're playing england and we're playing europe and and then maybe go to america Oh, so yeah. that that sounded like uh, like fun, and I said, "Well, uh, one one thing for sure, I know lots of the Genesis material. A little bit depending what you're playing, and of course, I understand it's it's not uh, we can dance or something from the right. 
<laughs> Pro probably something he played on, you know. Of course, yeah. Yeah, but but you know, and and he said, well, at, at this point, uh, it's gonna be stuff from from Oxford, from uh, Nursery Crime, from Selling England, and Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. And these are exactly the albums I know. Yeah, such great music. Yeah, yeah, uh, because. I started as a bass player and, and I here I get a chance to play bass and I play guitar. So so both actually and I know the material. So yeah. Is I mean, is there I know this is a tough question, but I have to ask right now, is there a favorite song out of that catalog you just mentioned that is like right in your your groove that you just get goosebumps to play? that's so much in your lane and really resonates with your musical sensibilities uh, yeah i mean i i always had a soft spot for a cinema show i have to yeah. say i have to say uh and we we played that and uh and i could feel the energy on stage and i think it was in a way because steve is very nice in that sense uh, reality is he didn't even play on on most of cinema show the the instrumental section i don't think is He's playing. I think it's just Phil, Mike, and and Tony playing that last part. Mm. So, but I mean, thinking that through, yeah. Yeah, because he's Mike is just strumming on the twelve string at that point. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you're right. Yeah, and probably using the bass pedals and stuff, you know. Yeah. Anyway, so so it's it's um. But I think it's uh, very generous of, of Steve to to play these songs. So it's not like uh, he's only playing songs that was his favorite songs or songs he wrote. Yeah. He, he's playing anything that Mike wrote or Tony wrote, you know, good songs that people want to hear. Right. And he's doing a great job. And he's, the band is great and a great show. And uh, that was... Um, a great time for me playing with the band because I, I love Genesis. When I was a teenager, I, I listened to it a lot and that helped me. So for yeah. me, it was easy, you know. I bet it was more difficult for Jonas that stepped in after me, you know. Yeah. Because because he, he had heard maybe a Duke or something like some of oh, that. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe a Seconds Out or something like that. Yeah. But I had a history. So for me, it was easy when, when Steve mentioned a song, I could almost play it without rehearsing it. <laughs> yeah, you know? I, I personally, yeah, I'm a drummer. You can probably yeah. tell. And I, I play that music all the time. I just love that music. It's just so timeless. It's just, there's so much substance and the dynamics and the storytelling and the simplicities to the in, in you know the complicated it's just everything it's a it's 360 music is what i like to call mm. it and i grew up on that too and it's just imprinted on my brain you know i just love playing that stuff and it, it's amazing to think that the this music was made i mean the, the first few albums it was made by not teenagers but they were just like 21 22 yeah 20. yeah yeah and, and that, decades later it's still just yeah legendary it's amazing I'm, I'm thinking when when i was that age i i didn't well i i could play and i made made albums but i hadn't really developed my skills as a writer or a player until later you know so it's, I, just, I could play but i was playing with my belly button most of the time <laughs> yeah <laughs> probably yeah but i mean it's it's uh bands like that like king crimson yes and genesis they were really pushing it you know yeah when they their early 20s and that's amazing to think about that right now it is like where did that come from yeah. All at the same time, too, right? If you the bands you just mentioned, you pick any year and you look at what each of those bands were putting out each year at the same time. Like, where did all that come from? Yeah, I think I think they they probably inspired each other. And and uh, in the in the case of of I don't know, I suppose uh, in the case of Genesis, they heard Procol Harum. They heard Yes, I suppose, in Crimson. Uh, yeah. So and and lots of fusion bands, you know, and Frank Zappa and all that, you know. They you yeah. pick a little bit. Throw in things. ELP at the same time, that yeah. same generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To to totally, totally. I mean, they yeah. they were they were a big band. The ELP were, I think, crucial for for the key mm -hmm. keyboard dominated. Yeah. Program. So, yeah. so for for 
guys like Tony Banks or or maybe even Rick Wakeman, you know, I think uh, people like Keith Emerson was, uh, you know, the big guy at the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And ju just one more question from one of our viewers. Uh, Tony Brown from Louisville, Kentucky says, psyched to see you guys on Cruise to the Edge and wants to know um, if you will play much from the upcoming Look At You Now album uh, on tour. Uh, once we get to the uh, well, this this tour uh, that we're doing now in uh, in October, we pro probably play like four or five songs. But at the oh, time wow. we, yeah, but the time we go on the cruise, we probably play more. I think. Mm. And if you add "Smoke on the Water" and "Free Bird," I'm definitely on board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. it's great to represent the album. That's great yeah. to hear. We we actually play a couple of, of cover tunes. We we did we we played Holland and Germany uh, a couple of months ago, and we did some odd covers. Actually, we did. Uh, let's see, we did for sure. We did soon by Yes. Oh wow, oh, that's nice. beautiful. Hasse can sing that because his voice is you know, kind of the same range. Mm. So we, we play that, uh, and but the funny thing is, we also played Ohio by Neil Young. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow that's something entirely different yeah you know? <laughs> yeah and and i mean we've been doing things just for fun you know playing a david bowie song or we're playing you know uh beatles songs of course yeah, lots stuff of stuff from nice. your roots right yeah uh, yeah always nice to play homage yeah you know it's, it's sometimes the fans enjoy that you know and we in, in particular when you're having these fan gatherings or you play a show in the evening but the daytime or the afternoon you play some some other music you know yeah and, and so it's not flower king's music all of it and and uh, sometimes music that inspired us sometimes something that we feel we can do something um, interesting with you know a different version or or just groovy or improvise or whatever you know yeah i'd love to make all my brother's song and I, I, well maybe i did back in the day but Things like that. Music I've been listening to way back, you know, Jimi Hendrix or the Allman Brothers, that kind of thing. You know, I'd love to play stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, that's I enjoy, it. I enjoy playing it, that kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking time to meet with Steve and I and our Yes Shift and Drum Talk TV fans. We're simulcasting all our Yes Shift episodes live on Drum Talk TV as well. Hang on the line for just a moment after we say goodbye to the audience. And everybody, thank you so much for following what we do here on Yes Shift and Drum Talk TV. On Yes Shift, you can follow us as a podcast, audio only at anchor.fm slash yes shift and on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash yes shift and youtube.com slash at yes shift and drum talk tv everyone pretty knows pretty much knows where that is yeah. uh drum talk tv.com <laughs> facebook.com slash yes shift etc i mean drum talk tv etc etc thanks Ryan, so much for joining us it's it's been a thrill we'd love to have you again hang on the line and everybody friendly reminder yeah, go out get the album and watch the two videos that Stephen put in the comments they're fantastic thanks everyone they're fine bye-bye